Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you guys? You guys are already here and chatting. Hi. How's it going, Megan? Hi, Rachel. Let's see. There's a couple Megans here. Hi, Brown Sugar. <laughs> How are you guys? Did you have a good weekend? Hi, Terry. Terry, your pea coat looks great. Oh my gosh. Hi, PJ. How's it going? <laughs> so, um, I, I saw you out. You were in. I, you know, if I get near glitter, it makes me itch. I don't know what it is. You got a glitter? Or you, you're covered in glitter? You're knitting it to come to, oh, I kind of remember that pattern. That's awesome. Awesome. I tried knitting the other day because I was like, I want to knit. And my hands got so tired. I'm so out of practice. Hi, Vicki. How are you guys? All right, how does the lighting look? Oh, we're going to be cutting these fabrics right here. So um, uh, I really want to brighten it up, and I want to make it smaller. But it's a big coat, so I, I'm trying to give you as much space as possible. So Really, Terry? Allergic to glitter? What's it made from? How weird. Yeah, if I even touch those like little, um, like, like a decoration or a card, if there's glitter on a card, I instantly start itching all through here and on my hands. Oh, good, thanks. The lighting looks okay. It's made from glass? Really? Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I went through this massive allergy test almost two years ago um, and I'm not typically allergic to things you know like I get allergies but it's no big deal okay good thanks you guys um because I thought I you guys see my struggle with my wedding ring I wore it for like three days and it and even my husband I, I can't wear my wedding ring um, and so I thought I was allergic to metal and I'm not even allergic to metal it's just because water gets trapped underneath my ring and they won't fill it so, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought glitter was made from plastic. How weird. Oh, I just, anytime I see it, it took me a while to figure out that I would get itchy with it. But every, I started, every time I would see glitter, immediately go, oh, that's going to make me itch. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And I'm like, oh, that's true, though. It's like one of those subliminal things. Okay, so um, we are making the Cascade Duffel Coat. And it's going to be this one right here. Fully lined with a zipper, separating zipper, toggles hood, um, and we're adding an intro lining. I'm making this for a friend. It's very cold where she lives in the winter, and so these are all of her fabrics and specs. Really, Terry? Okay, well, I don't feel crazy now. I feel like when you say things like that, like, I'm allergic to that, it's so melodramatic. Like, I feel like I'm being melodramatic, but when I hear people say it, I don't think they're being melodramatic. Hi, Rachel. Evening. Hi, Melin. All right, I decided this morning that I know the most sewists named Rachel. <laughs> I think I interact with five Rachels just with the stream. And Megan's. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Whereas in knitting, the most popular names are Susan and Susan. Yeah, no, no, there's like, I know like three Megan's. Isn't that funny? It's just a cool name. It is a cool name. <laughs> you guys are definitely proud of the name Rachel. I love it. <laughs> the gal doing the test sewing um, thing for the patterns, her name is Rachel as well. And then there's someone else on Instagram I interact with a lot named Rachel. And another, I, yeah. <sighs> so, um, anywho, has anyone made this coat? Do I need to know anything? I've been looking at the hashtags and now I want to make me one. And they're so cute. I haven't seen anyone post any like sewing issues with it. So that's really exciting because I feel like this is going to be pretty stout. It's got, I'm making it with this wool melton, which is so lovely. And the camera is not going to capture it, but there's all kinds of little speckles of color in here. She sent some in flannel interlining, pretty basic, and then a nice slippery lining lining. Toggles real toggles and then horsehair which you guys I, I'm realizing like I used to work at a fabric store that um, 
Really, Rachel? That's hilarious. Oh, really, Malin? Uh-oh. I know, that gets really big and heavy. So um, I, I realized that I, I, I actually wished I'd had Terry's phone number yesterday and I was gonna like say, Terry, <laughs> what's the grain line on this stuff? This stuff's crazy. There's no selvage on it and it's really long and narrow and I thought, I really thought that the grain line would be going with these gray stripes, but I saw pictures of people cutting it out and it was like this and I was like, oh, that's good because the pattern pieces wouldn't fit otherwise or does it matter? So. This coat won't be able to be washed. It's going to definitely be dry clean only. <laughs> okay, Terry. <laughs> Next time I might, I will be like, Terry, do I, I know who you are on, on, I could probably do it on Facebook, yeah. Yeah, you're my, like, coat gal. <laughs> okay, so um, I recently alluded to the fact that I kind of had an exciting announcement, and um, I've been really overwhelmed by it. Um, but I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm ready to tell you guys because something came in the mail yesterday that is making it real. And I, I, I'm going to tell you, like, one Sunday, I can't remember what was going on, but there were, there were a lot of things going on. I think, I think it was the, the day that I, or two days after the day, like, I, anyway, all this other stuff's going on. And Sunday, I was having one of those days where I was like, oh, just relaxing. I saw this email pop pop up and in the subject line it said a gift and I was like I immediately shut my email because I saw who it was from and I was like you know I'm not going to get my hopes up about this and now I feel really terrible for getting my hopes up because that makes me feel really like it made me feel really bad that I got my hopes up for it and then I, I think the subject line said generous gift and I was like hmm I do not subscribe to this company's newsletters. So I also knew that it wasn't like a newsletter they were sending to everybody. So um, I later on I got the courage to open it up and um, it totally made me cry. But someone anonymously gifted me a Beatrice form, a dress form. I'm already getting a little emotional about it again, so I'm trying not to because it definitely really brought up a lot of stuff for me. And I, I can't thank this per person personally, and I hope that if they ever see my thank you, they know that how much it really meant to me. Because it was, it was more than just getting the dress form, it was the fact that someone did this for me. Like that they thought they had enough faith in, 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 my, in what I'm doing that they thought I would be worthy of it. You know what I mean? Hi, Sherry. <laughs> I know, you guys. So um, I read through the email a few times, and they said the person wants you to know that no matter what she does, even, you know, in the future, whatever her business, that this is definitely her, hers to enjoy. So I really, I really appreciated that they added that kind of, like, yo, we know you're, sh you're figuring out the stream thing. You know, I don't want you to feel like this is something you can't accept, you know, it, it really helped. And the first thing I thought, I literally thought when I saw this gift was, wow, I can't wait to show my stream the things we can do with a dress form. And then I felt really like, yeah, that actually is exactly how I feel. I'm really excited to share with you the things we can do with the dress form because you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna see my body standing next to me and I can fit it and all my weird little sizing and fitting things and hopefully they'll be, they'll be useful to you as well. And I'm hoping I can make it as useful to all of you as possible. So I know you guys, I'm so, I'm so thankful and overwhelmed. The first thing I did was I called my husband, you know, and this is the thing is like, I was like, this has got to be a family member. This is such a generous gift. And I was like, nope, my family, none of my family would even know about Beatrice Forms. So the woman at Beatrice Forms has been so lovely and she's just been um, really, you know, like walking me through the process. I got my kit yesterday. So that's why I really wanted to share this exciting news with you guys. Um, this is definitely a process, you know, so this is what I got in my box. So if some of you don't know what a Beatrice form is, it is a custom dress form where they take a body scan of you with their app and then they m make a dress form that as close to, as possible resembles your actual body, your posture, 
your idiosyncrasies, your asymmetries, all of that. And um, it comes on a regular dress form stand and everything. It is, it's legit. And people love them. So it gets really great reviews. And so they sent me the scan kit. And so this is what I got. I already poked around. So this is, um, this is just a list of what you, what you have in here. So there's um, a short sleeve t-shirt and shorts that you wear during the scan process. It's very form fitting. <laughs> I know, I know, right? I know, I was thinking that I was like, really? During the month of the year that I really want to eat all the good treats? <laughs> but hey, it's real, right? <laughs> There's a tape measure in here. Um, I can see this one little thing in here. There are these little dots. So you put them on your shoulder points so that you know, like the um, app knows where you would like your shoulder points to be. Uh, there's elastic in here to put around, I think your bust, bust in your waist, I think. Twill tape so that I think it's visible and some safety pins. And that's it. And then there's an app. And I need help. I was going to try and do this for the stream, but I don't think it's going to be possible for me to do it because of the logistics. Um, but I'll try and I get a picture of me doing it so that you guys can be a part of the process. Um, I watched a little video on YouTube. It's really fascinating. It's like a five minute video if you guys are kind of interested in what you do. And she's standing there while her husband does five scans, walks around her, um, four, 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 I don't know how many, um, holding the phone. And that's it. And then you submit that information and then they make your dress form. So, um, thanks. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. I'm really happy about this. Um, I I can't wait to use it. Like I have been thinking about all the things I really want to do with this. So that little angel out there, uh, you're. I would love to name it after you. Hi, Eliza. <laughs> I was just announcing Eliza that someone gifted me a Beatrice dress form and just all that was in my little kit to, to do the scan form. So, the scan to, for my dress form. So, and we're just about to start dress, uh, cutting out the cascade double coat. So, anyway, I'm a little like, ah. But um, I just really, really wanted to share it. You guys are the first people I wanted to tell you are my sewing friend. And I had to wait. I just had to let it settle in. I had to think about it for a bit and decide if I wanted to accept it because it felt really generous. Um, and then I really, I really thought about it a lot because I thought, you know, if this were me gifting this, I would, I'd be really disappointed if they didn't accept it. And I know that's a really convenient way to think, but I, I'm pretty good about kind of sorting out how I feel about something. So it's an amazing gift. I don't think I've ever been displayed this. It's a, such a weird thing to be like in a position where I used to sell a product. And, you know, it's like you kind of have this, like, it's kind of the middle person. Like, if someone likes your product, they buy it, right? They don't have to know it's you that makes it. It's kind of nice. It's a little more anonymous. It's not totally anonymous, but it's a little anonymous. This is very personal. And so it's like, you either like it or you don't, right? It's a totally different type of interaction. And I know live streaming isn't for everybody. And there's a lot of, I get some comments from people saying, you know, I really wish you would just keep going and not stop talking to people in the chat. Um, or um, where's video number two? Maybe video number two got corrupted, but you know if you were there live, you would have seen it. And it's definitely not the like the most ideal format for everybody, but it is based in the fact that I'm trying to build a community of people that support each other while we're sewing, and we can ask each other questions. We're all different ability levels and sizes, and we come from all over the world, and we can come together over this most frustrating and amazing craft, right? So, so let's get to it. <laughs> so I'm really glad I could finally share this with you guys. <laughs> it was a long time thinking about it. I've almost let it slip a couple times, especially when Megan was like, come on, tell us. <laughs> I really wanted to. So, so again, if you're here to see the Cascade Duffel Coat, um, we are making View B with the hood fully lined. I have made some pattern alterations because the person who's getting it is two inches above the waist and three inches above the hip. And so I'm going to show you how I blended the sizes. And I did already do these alterations to the pattern. I'm going to walk you through them. I get a lot, I get that question kind of 
um, occasionally about how you blend between sizes. And really, if that's all you're doing for sizing changes, it's the easiest way to do sizing changes. If this had needed bigger changes like through the shoulders or the sleeve or the armhole, it would have been a lot more involved. But for this coat, even though it's lined, it's pretty straightforward, and I'll show you that. But the first thing I'm going to cut out is the horsehair pieces because I need those pattern pieces for the other things. And I just want to get these out of the way because I tend to forget to cut the interfacing with you guys. So You did, Rachel? That's awesome. So did Nancy. That is awesome. Yeah, I was thinking that could have been a really fun project to do with you guys. That's really cool. Someone was... Um, I don't remember who was asking, but because the bootstrap dress form was on sale recently and someone in the Facebook group, if you guys want to join the Facebook group, um, I'm sorry I haven't logged in on the desktop in a while. I used to get a notification, like we started giving notifications if people asked to join the group and I always accept everybody. Um, I'm going to check today and I will accept anyone who's requested. That's all you have to do is request to join the Facebook group. It's the So So Soists, I think. It's a lot of words, I know. And yeah, see, it's 40% off right now, you guys. And so someone was asking about it. So if anyone wants to chime in with their experience. And Nancy loves her. She made two. First one, she said she didn't pick quite the right fabric. And she said her biggest struggle with it is just stuffing it. Because that's really where you start shaping it. Because, you, you know, even if it's perfectly your measurements, you can still stuff it so that it's not your measurements, right? So, something to think about. And she said, I've seen her say that a few times, so I feel like I can say that. Yeah, <laughs> right, Eliza? I know, 40% off. And think about it, you guys. If you guys do the bootstrap, you are three quarters of the way to your custom block. Because you basically, that's what you'll have. You will have a custom block for you. Yeah, and they have arms. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, to I hope you guys do this. Would be so we all have custom dress forms. <laughs> okay. So um, I had almost enough of this horsehair. I'm pretty sure I'm going to run out a little bit. So I'm going to cut. This isn't horsehair. This is just some fabric I have. But it is um, a feel. feels a little bit the same. It actually looks kind of the same. And I'm going to use it on the pocket, if anything. So Because the pocket takes in facing. So. You also got the arm, too. That's great. Oh, oh, oh. I just thought my thing. Oh, my gosh. You guys are over there. Brian, thank you, Brian. I know. I'm saying, saying hi to Twitch, you guys. Oh, cool. You're doing the, oh, the Forester Coat by Twig and Tail. Okay, I haven't heard of the Forester Coat or Twig and Tail. That's so cool. I know, Rival, so cool. I'm, so, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Hi, Brooke. I'm good. I'm really excited about it. it it's, it's overwhelming, um, and I'm, I am really excited, though. Oops, wrong tab. Wrong tab. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to move this whole shebang off to the side. We have a lot to cut today, so that's why I also kind of did a little bit of the work pre-stream. Because I really want to get to the bits I think you'll find the most helpful and useful. You know, Rachel, it used to be made out of horsehair. When I was actually looking it up last night for the green line, um, it used to be a blend of horsehair and wool, and it's not anymore. It is not horsehair. I think you can still find it, but it's, this isn't. Yeah, Rachel, what did you use for your fabric? Yeah, and it's very, um, uh, you know, it feels like it's fusible, but it's not, because um, it feels kind of coarse and kind of stiff, but it's, um, and it's not a very tight weave, but there's just something about it. It's very, it's very stiff. Like it's got a lot of body. But look, you can see my hand through it. But can you? Can you see my hand? It's, it's not tightly woven. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, Megan. Okay, so I, I don't usually pin my pattern pieces, but I was a little nervous about the fabric. So I wanted to do some layouts and to remember how I planned it. So I'm just gonna unpin a little bit here and just do. You can see these pieces, like this one here. I underlined all my my uh, powder pieces by the color of the fabric. So 
Self for me is always black. Self is the outer fabric. Um, lining, I always mark it blue. Contrast is green. I don't have any contrast this time. Red is always interfacing. And then sometimes there's different like stiffeners and interfacings. I'll do purple for my fourth. So, a woven polyester cut. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll bet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that sale goes through the end of the year, doesn't it, you guys? That's so cool. While I have you guys here, too, if anybody is interested in being a test sewer for the project bag pattern I have coming out, it's going to take place in January. And if you just want to email me and let me know you're interested, you don't have to, it's not a guarantee that you will test sew it or that you have to sign up for it. I'm going to just turn your email over to the gal handling it, and she's just going to try and get a variety of abilities to sew it. Um, her name is also Rachel. And if you just email me at sewsewlive at gmail.com, then you can find out more information. But it is a, uh, if you're familiar with chicken boots, it's the project bag. That was in my line from the get-go. It's about this big, Megan. I've shown it to you on camera before. They're way over there. But, um, yeah, it's stiff. So it takes stiffener. You can sew it without the stiffener. I'm, I'm very curious to see how whatever people want to do with it. Um, I have sewn one on a home sewing machine. It's totally doable. Uh, but it is heavy duty sewing towards the end, just so you know. But it comes, like, it's really simple till the, till the very end, and that's when the whole bag comes together. That's what you're going to, you know, that's where you're going to really want the video I made. It comes with a video and fully illustrated instructions, like photographed instructions on how to do it. So if you're interested in doing it um, and you want to, if you feel like you'll have time in January, because that's when the testing is going to be taking place, just email me and I'll turn you over to the other Rachel. She's super, super sweet and nice. She does this on the side, managing test sewer groups. So she has experience with that. So. And I just decided to do that so it was as neutral as possible. And then she'll, she'll, you know, when people have issues, she'll figure it out. So I can make a good pattern. So I'm really excited to release it, but I really want to test it. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to be that cocky, you know. All right, so let's get to sewing here, or cutting. So I totaled today, I'm going to check Twitch again. Nice, Rival, you did? That's so cool. You had needle and thread handy. Those pom-poms are really hard to sew. That's awesome. <laughs> I feel like I sometimes get so excited when I sew, sew the simplest things that make my life easier, you know? Yeah, right, Abilene? I know. I know. It's a custom dress form pattern. How cool is that? Okay, so let's see. I have... I'm gonna try and do I only have three weights here? What the heck? What the heck? Alright, well, we'll just cut one at a time here. I'm gonna try and slide this over as much as possible. So yeah, this is the fabric folded in half. So it is a really weird width. <laughs> we sold this at a fabric store I worked at where she sold really authentic things to make your garment as professional as possible, and she also um, was a natural fiber store. So I definitely cut it and I was around it, but I didn't know much about it. All right, so I'm just gonna go for it. I'm making the size 18, except that I am modifying the waist and the hip, and I will cover that when we get there. All right. So this morning I was thinking about like the the year and like all the things we made because I was thinking about um, how I'm lately I'm sewing some things off camera because they're gifts and I was thinking like I've sewn a lot of things off camera this year and then I was like but I've sewn a lot of things on camera and I was like I wonder if I can figure out how many things I've made with you guys this year and so I totaled up by video and I've made I think 53 things with you guys this year everything from the little friend pouch to cascade duffel I didn't even count this one actually and um, I didn't count any of the pattern drafting streams or how to's that I posted 
So I'm really proud of that, you know? Like, I now, I'm, I think I'm going to write a calendar out for the year of all the things that we did. So when we plan through the year, we have it to compare to. Like, this time last year, we were making <laughs> the Cheyenne tunic, you know what I mean? I, thought, I know, Megan, I thought it was actually around 50, just like 50 perfectly. But then I looked and we made the Mountain View colons and the Cheyenne tunic in January, so I could include those. I thought those were in December. All right, so let's see. Where am I going to put these? I really want to stay organized. I have my like little rolling cart here with the tiers. Oh, I need to cut this and sew. That's what I'm doing. I'm putting that there. This is mostly the battle. When you're cutting things with lots of pieces, and some of them are in multiple, the same pattern pieces in multiple fabrics, reminding yourself to cut those pieces is really, really important because I definitely have fallen prey to missing them, you know? And then I'm like, wait, where's that pattern piece? And why didn't I cut it? It's because it's still, I just threw it in the pile once I cut it in the other fabric, you know? You can see everything, right? I got to switch out my desk because when we moved my husband's grandma, we had to downsize a few of her things, and so I took her little desk. It's kind of nice. I didn't, I, you know, it's like when you're trying to downsize stuff like that, I don't want to give away someone's stuff, you know? <laughs> she doesn't need it anymore, but um, still, it's kind of nice that I can still use it. She's a retired librarian. We found so many interesting things, like awards for working um, at the university that she worked on. So, <laughs> thanks, Brooke. <laughs> I know, right? You know, having a stream really holds you accountable <laughs> to, um, you know, be productive. Yeah, Rachel, she's she's 96. She came over on the Berlin Airlift. She's German. <laughs> Crazy, right? Okay, this is only in the interfacing. So I can put this. I'm going to be really careful. You're going to probably see me more careful than usual with my pieces. I'm going to stack them nicely so that I know exactly where they are. I'm going to save every scrap of this because I found one more piece yesterday, but the hood needs it too. So I just kind of rolled up my pattern pieces on here. Some of these are kind of loose because they are cut on the fold and what was it? There, well, I, it's okay. I know what I'm doing there. We'll get there in a second. So this piece here is the back armhole facing. So even the armholes have this reinforcement. How will I handle the hemming? They get sewn together with this one, Melin. Yeah, I, exactly, Eliza, right? Yeah, and I took one of her cushy chairs, too, which is great because she only can fit one in her new place, and I hated to break them up, you know? They're not, like, they're not valuable or anything. Like, this desk is all wood, though. It's, it's almost mid-century modern, but it's not anything special from then. But it is from that era, and it's all real wood, which is kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna cut this right here, but I'm gonna flip the fabric so you can see the piece, like this. And then we just got no notice today that she gets to move in tomorrow. Finally, she gets to get out of that skilled nursing facility. She's gonna be so happy to get out of there and get home, but she hasn't even seen her new home yet. So it's definitely, it's kind of a weird thing. You know, you're moving someone that she knows she's moving. She's definitely got all of her, her you know, mental faculties. There's that, which is great. Um, and that does help. And so she's fully aware. And she's like, yeah, I'm totally fine with wherever. Uh, it's just assisted. And it is so nice. So... I'm really happy about that because I was like, really? Like, what's that going to be like? This is only an interfacing P14. I'll just pin it on here because that kind of pattern paper, it just doesn't cling, you know? 98. Oh, my gosh. She still lives in her own home, Sherry. 
See, Maggie would too if she could, but um, she was on the third floor of this apartment building overlooking the, the San Francisco Bay. It was so special. She'd been there a really long time, and um, she couldn't get out of the building like because it was on such a high hill. She couldn't. She couldn't drive anymore. The local police knew her and were telling her, you can't. We keep finding you at your favorite coffee shop, even though you're hiding your car in a different spot. We still see you. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, I gotta stop driving. And then um, her, it was on such a high hill, she couldn't just walk down to the bus stop either because she has really severe rheumatoid arthritis. So, yes, yes. Oh, cool, Liza, that's awesome. Yeah, I think so. Everyone, like, I feel like the, um, everywhere, like, we went, like, if we were moving her out of her old place or, um, moving, or at her new place, moving her in, everyone's very much like, oh, are you moving out? Are you moving in? You know, so everyone's very curious, you know. I don't want to say, you know, they're thinking, fresh meat, but that's what it felt like. They're like, oh, someone new. <laughs> but they all seem eager to meet friends and... It's so nice too. They they built it a couple of years ago, and there's a little bistro in there that literally, you guys, looks like a bar. Like you walk in and it's a bar. It feels like you're walking into a bar. It has that vibe. Um, the 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 dining area looks like a restaurant, you know. So it looks like you're on vacation, honestly. All right, this is this one, right? Yeah. Necklines can sometimes where they stack this grade point because typically you would see when you're grading a pattern and you nest the point, like see how there's no grade right here on this line right here? There's no gradation and there's a gradation here, here, and here. This is where a pattern drafter chooses to stack the point because you can stack this anywhere. You can stack it here, here, here. Um, and usually it's right here you stack it. So that's why I was like making sure that um, I was cutting the right line. And there's a little notch right here. Half inch seam allowance, so I'm not really worried too much about my rotary knife for the um, notches. This gets self, so I'm gonna put that back on top. These I can get rid of, but I'm still saving that little narrow piece because I do have some narrow pieces coming up. This one's not on the fold. Yeah, that's good to hear, Eliza, because I thought about it a lot. I mean, not to get like, like too personal or too like, you know, I know that th that this kind of topic is very present on a lot of people's minds and it can be a really intense one for a lot of us, right? And not everybody has the, um, you know, the option to live somewhere else, can afford that, um, at, or even has the health care that they need, right? Or you just worry and it, and it definitely just like being around all of her things. My hardest thing was making the decision, I just got that pretty badly, um, of what, I know this sounds like the, the dumbest thing I was worried about. It, it wasn't the only thing I was worried about, I promise. I'm just not telling you all the details. <laughs> but the thing I really, I really struggled with, and it's probably because it would be me if it were, if it was the shoes on the other foot, was picking what to hang on her walls. Like, I don't know, is this picture someone that, of someone she likes or doesn't like? Did they just show up one day and be like, hey, how are you going? It's so good to see you. And, oh, I brought a picture of our couple. And then she hung it up out of politeness, you know? <laughs> and then she's like, oh, when you when we move, I went up to see that picture. I know I'm overthinking it, but, you know, you do think that. You know, you think, okay, what does she really want on the walls? It, you know, this little plastic broken turtle from San Diego, um, is that... Is that just, you know, a throwaway thing? Or was this, like, really precious? Like, maybe someone gave it to her or there was, like, a memory attached, you know? Because you don't have as much space. So what we did was we prioritized, and we, we boxed all of her books. She was a librarian, right? So the books were her thing. Um, and um, 
I can't, like, books are very personal to me, too, so I'm not going to just get rid of her books. Um, she was very interested in languages, but more like idioms and grammar and very specific things. She studied French. I found all of her, like, books where she was studying French. As a woman, probably over 70, still learning. And um, so all of her bookshelves were empty, and I put all of her knickknacks and photos on those. That's what I decided to do. So, yeah, the socialization's got to be really important. And I was thinking, like, I was telling my husband, I was like, you know, like, this place, obviously we wouldn't think of living here right now, right? <laughs> We've got a few decades. But I was, I lived communally, and I really, really loved it. And um, he hasn't done that before, right? I mean, the closest thing you do is live in an apartment building or whatever. Okay, wait, I have all these pieces here. I have to check them. And I was like, you know, like, say this was targeted towards our generation, you know? And I, I brought this up with my chiropractor, and he was like, yeah, like, they're playing, like, Depeche Mode in the lobby, <laughs> and Duran Duran comes to a concert. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Like, not what they, what you're hearing in the in the thing. I was like, could you live here? And he was like, yeah, actually. I'm like, yeah, like maybe they would be have canoe things on the lake or something. You know, it was kind of funny to think about it. I'm always thinking about things like that. I don't know. All right, I need two of these. These are the sleeve facing. I need two of these. I need one of these. I need two of these, and it is it at a weird angle. I need two of you. I need one of you on the fold, and I need one of you. All right, those look nice. Oh, 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 I can put this here, maybe. Let's see. I need to put two of these together. One of those. Yeah, so I am getting kind of low. Where do I want to? Okay, I think I want all the hems to feel the same, right? So I think um, this is, oh, this is on the fold. That's right. This is on the fold. So I actually think I may have to, have to piece this one together. That's what it is. So I do need two pieces of that. I need two pieces of this. I can do one of these here. This is going to be on the fold. I'm yeah, I'm not going to make it. So I think what I'll do is this is the front armhole. I'm going to definitely do the armhole so that's the same. So I've already cut two of those. Did I do a neck? Did I do a neck? So there's a back neck facing, but there's there not a front neck facing. Use the larger scraps for small patterns. I don't, all I have is this. This is my only scrap. This is not the same fabric. I'm trying to use as much of this one as possible. So I actually have two pieces here. So maybe I can put this one with a seam allowance. Okay. Because it's the longest one I'd use the most. Because I don't think I can get these two. Ooh, could I? Let's see. Alright, so if I kind of skew the, I actually don't skew the grain line at all because it is the sleeve and the grain line's right here. So this would work right here, just like that. Can I get this here? I'm going to do this actually because this side has a curve. Alright, so that's there. Do I got it? Dang it. Oh, oh my gosh, I do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, right, Rachel Meyer? I know. Yeah, I know. There is no, they have, she has like someone cleans and stuff like, oh, you meant these, Megan. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Look at that, barely, this is the amount I'm adding to the width of the hem. 
So that's why I can't cut that off. It's not scrap. All right, so let's do this. Let's put this here. Put that right there. That's good. This piece. Bottom line. Ooh, that didn't feel like I got two layers. Oh, I did. Okay. Phew. Yeah, I think, did I tell you guys about, like, when I lived in a community and they, they made some big changes and they were trying to limit the number of people there just for a little while while they were reorganizing. And they realized what they had done was limited the age, the age um, of people. And so what they did was they stopped allowing younger people like the 20 somethings in and they realized it was a, it ended up being a huge mistake for them because they needed the multi-generational thing and um, they started like asking like reaching out to people like me if I wanted to move back there that was a really interesting thing and I really appreciated that they were like yep this was not <laughs> we want we want some more diversity with age all right, I'm a little bit off of my corner there. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bit, like, flat right here. It's okay. I have a half-inch seam allowance, so it's going to be fine. I can see it visually, so it'll be fine. All right. So these are pieces that I still need to cut in self. I can't forget them. And again, I just have this little visual cue, right? Like, I underlined the word self in black. And then I underline interfacing in red. And so it, at a glance, I can tell that those need to go in my top shelf there with all the other pattern pieces that need to be cut. All right, so let's see. What do we have left? Yeah, Megan, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, like, my daughter um, was actually helping her out on Fridays do, like, light shopping and stuff for her. And um, it was a really good experience. Like, in some ways, it was really frustrating for her because Maggie is so stubborn. <laughs> but at the same time, and she'd be like, Mom, she wants this, like, $90 bottle, bottle of perfume, and she hasn't even finished her last bottle. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know. But that's what she wants, you know? And then she was like, yeah, I don't think she's using it. Like, she was trying to actually be really responsible with her money, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and then Maggie loved it. Like, Maggie loved, of course, seeing Cricut. So, um, it was mutually beneficial, you know? And she paid her, you know, she paid her whatever for the hour she was there. So, yeah, I mean, this is a good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing to have that multi-generational mentoring, right? That's kind of what's happening. Let's see. All right. Okay. So, I have this one here, which is on the fold, right? So we have this. Okay. This one just needs one, but can I do this? Aha. I could. So I get one of those that would take up the most of that. Do you see what I mean by, like, I'm using the most of the fabric with the bigger piece. It's kind of what you want to do. And then I need another one over here, like that. So now the top part of my fabric is pretty much spoken for. I might get this in here. Yep, I can get this in here. All right, so now I have this. Now what I have left, I have, oh, I'm doing really good. Okay, so I need two of these. Two of these. And then one. And then can I get two of these in the middle? I don't think so. Let's see. One. But maybe if I do this, like this. No. I may have to use something different for the hood. Right? Oh, wow. All oh, about that's so yummy. All right, so I have this one here, right? This one goes here. Right? 
That's a little off grain. I don't think it's going to be a big deal because it's on the underarm, but still. Tetris, you guys. Right, like that. This one is what is the center hood facing and only one. I have the most impact. Oh my god, do I really have it? Did I really get it? What am I missing? I'm just missing the pockets. Okay. So let's cut this one out first. I might kind of leave those in the same position so I remember what I planned. I, I, it's like sometimes this kind of thing is a little stressful, but I really enjoy it. Do you guys like bagging groceries? <laughs> cut the top three, then fold fabric for the two. You might get a Tetris player, I can see. One and both. Try not to go past my cut lines, because that's always the worst, right? You're like, yay, and then you make this huge cut line. You know, you go like this, and um, you ruin the rest of the fabric. You guys haven't seen me do that before. All right, let's see, let's do our notches. Um, I'm gonna do the center of this just in case I need it. I do need one of these in self, so it's going on the top of the bin there. And now we have this one here. See how stiff, it's kind of like, Stiff, stiff. It's just very like you can't even crease it. I did iron it because, um, like, folding it in the mail definitely would did add that the little crease lines. But they like came right out. I love Tetris too. Fabric chicken, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I need to add seam allowance to that end. It's my only thing that I need to do. We'll just add a half inch, even though I'm typically a, a quarter inch type of gal. Like that. Oh my gosh. Heck, I hate when I do that and then I pull everything out, out of alignment. You know? I'm going to put my weight over it so I don't accidentally cut off the seam allowance. I've never done that before. <laughs> so thoughtfully crafted and then I just lop it off. Hold me. All right, this one um, also has, so this coat has 30 pattern pieces. 30! Like even the hems have fabric. You don't just fold it up and hem it. <laughs> Megan, that's hilarious. Uh, well, Sherry, you know, I sometimes do when I don't know what I want to do with something, but, um, oh, I still need two of these. That's where it happened, you guys. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get this first. Um, 
And I don't, I really don't like having extra fabric because it really piles up quickly. You know, it's, it's, I think it's just, you know, from having the factory, it really piles up quickly. You know what, maybe I will fold this. Let's just see it now. Can I get a better yield if I don't fold it? I can dip below there, right into that little nook. I think that'll be good. I'm looking at the grain line in relation to these lines here. I can slide this a little bit more. Yeah, and this is, I, I didn't realize, like, how is this fabric sold? Is it sold by different widths? Or, um, so I can get that little piece in there. Put this, um, straighten that out a little bit. I need two of these in fabric as well. And now I just need two of these. Dang, I'm good. Pretty proud of that. Those grain lines are different. <laughs> Let's at least make them the same. I just didn't get this pocket piece. That's all. Eighteen is this upper line right here. That's why I just checked it. I'm very focused, aren't I? Okay. Those, uh, these are just interfacing, so it's my. <laughs> I don't have to make that. So I have all this. I'm rich, right? <laughs> oh, it comes in um, big rolls. Like how is it in different widths? Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah, Terry, you know, is it enough like to do, um, could you make a, um, I have, I have like some sewing show and tell for you guys because, um, but I, I have to make sure someone's not watching the stream. Um, could you make an archer button up type of shirt, like a, a button up shirt and use just the front and the back with that wool on inside? Like you just maybe make a flannel shirt and then line the, the body, not the sleeve, body with it. Is it enough for that? Because that kind of, um, that'd be a good use for it. And then you're using it all, you know? I don't know why now I'm trying to save fabric. I, look at all this I got. I'm going to put it right in the middle. <laughs> I don't understand why there's only one of these. Yeah. Why is there an arrow there? Three quarters of a yard. So that's 27 inches. You might not get the yoke. Maybe though, if you put the yoke on the cross grain. So 27 inches. You know, that's that's quite a bit. I'll bet you could. You could you do like a you know what I mean? Alright, so I'm just gonna do my notches. Trying to be a good girl and not miss things. Um, I also need this in the 
itself. And then I'm going to cut this pocket in this. I don't have very many wovens in my office that aren't like printed quilting cottons. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. That went better than I thought because I had kind of done the layout roughly to see where I was at with that fabric, um, especially after I researched which of the grain line was, because if the grain line was the other way, I was like, oh, this isn't going to happen. Um, but I wasn't familiar with the fabric and there's no selvage. And so I, I kind of looked around at cutting layouts. I was like, oh, okay, this is correct then. And then I laid it all out and I was like, all right, I have enough, except for the pocket probably. And then I noticed that the <laughs> front of the hood has it too. And I was like, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. Did I just hurt my blade somewhere? You know, my cutter, I'm really embarrassed to say, is so old school. Like, it's like from, it's like one of the very first ones that ever came out. And um, I'm starting to get, like, see that? That's not my blade. That's because it's starting to get wiggly right here. I don't know why I just won't buy a new cutter, you know? It's not sentimental, <laughs> you know? Okay, leave open. Oh, these are just the, you sew and turn the pocket. So this is another one I need self for. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Yeah, you guys always have to suffer through me folding up my scraps all nice. It's the only time I'm a good um, influence, right? Just do it now. All right, so I need to set this here for a second. wide. It's wider than my table, barely. I also made sure I had enough fabric for this because I didn't want to, I wanted to know, oh, do I need to be creative or not? <laughs> and um, it's pretty easy to cut it, so we're good. That's why I made my camera a little higher up than usual. So here's the salvage. And then, um, I have a fold over there. I worked on the getting it folded so that the grain line was true. I can tell that the wool is like, it's really nice. Um, and I wish you could really see the like texture and the color of it, the little speckles in it. It's really nice. It's gonna be a nice coat. And um, you know, I can tell that the wool relaxes a little bit. So that's why I'm kind of Smoothing out some of these little pieces here. I wanted it to stay on grain. All right, so we have this massive amount of stuff to cut out. So let's talk about how I blended between the sizes. Oh, these are all lining pieces. I was stacking up these on the wrong shelf. Lining, lining, lining. Self, self, self. So, so, so. Here we go. I put this on the right one. Now uh, this is in both. All right. So, to make the alteration to add two two inches to the waist circumference and three inches to the hip circumference. Um, that's actually not a very big change because when you divide it up by the number of seams that you have, it's actually one quarter the measurement, right? Yeah, I know, fabric's nice. So it's wool melting, so it is pretty legit. Okay, so here is the middle of the coat. There's a yoke up there as well. This is the back, and this is. This is the front and this is the back, which is, 
I think it's, it's it's always Greenland that does this, right? Puts the front facing this way and the back that way, which is always the reverse of almost all patterns. But at least when you line them up next to each other, the side seam, you get a, a full, you know, this is a full um, left front. It's hard for me to even say that. <laughs> so now my pattern alterations aren't pretty because I just did it. But so for the waist here is this narrower area here. This is where I added the half inch. And then I taper out to this 3 quarters of an inch here on each side. So 3 quarters here and 3 quarters here. That's an inch and a half. And then on the other side of the coat, another inch and a half. That's through 3 inches. So to get 3 inches in the hip circumference, all you need to do is add 3 quarters of an inch to one side. And then you have your other 3 quarters to the other side. I made sure my side seam matched and still sews together. And then I made sure uh, that the lining, same thing. So the lining is a piece that is all one piece. So this right here is the front lining. Um, and this is interesting because this is actually the, so this is the left front. This is the right front lining. It's a really common thing because if this was sewn inside the garment, you'd have to put it to the other side. So don't get confused if you're trying to match patterns and things like that. Think about left and rights and stuff. Oh, this is nice and soft, Megan. But you might be really sensitive to it. This is really nice and soft. This doesn't feel like the sweater I have on today, you know. So this piece is all one, right? There's no seam. So you could do the full taper. The reason I have these really messy lines on here is that I'm really paranoid. I'm going to accidentally cut this off when I start cutting it. So I put as many warning things to myself. I put pointed arrows to my seam and I drew this messy green line along it. So I would go, okay, I need to not cut this off. And I have found that like, say, you know when you have that pattern piece that's on the fold, like this one right here? I have found um, so many, uh, so often I'll see um, sewists that haven't maybe um, sewn as much or maybe they haven't had a piece that's on the fold, like when you have to do it like this, place it on the fold and cut it. They will accidentally, if it's been lined, this piece was printed on the paper very parallel to the edge they will mistakenly like not cut that piece of paper off thinking okay it's on the fold like they're already trying to do themselves a favor and then accidentally they line that edge up to the fold right out here the other thing um that i see is people will obviously cut the fold along the fold line me what i usually do when i see these like this i always cut this edge like near it i cut it at an angle a lot of times you'll see I do this, I do a wiggly line right here, so it's really, really obvious, and I don't put the paper edge to the fold edge, not this line. And it's just because sometimes I'm going a little too fast. It's not um, not good, you know? So it's my own little thing. This person lives um, in the Midwest. It's cold there. <laughs> Very cold already. <laughs> um, so anyway, so if you were to say you were um, you were a size 10 up in the bust, but a size 16 down in the hip, you would do the same similar thing, just kind of blend it. Just make sure when you blend it, you're not going you know, really sharp because you will see that. Um, or doing this, like this, and then rounding it out. You don't really want to make the hip, so if this was the waist, you don't want to do this bump thing like that because that's really tempting because sometimes you don't need to add anything up here but you really need a lot down here try and blend this in a little bit better like that you will see that bump on the outside nobody has that bump um, and if they do they don't really want to skim it that close like that wow man wow two snow days so those pile up and then at the end of the year they just add it to the school year that's what happens to my sister in Washington. All right, so this is the lining piece. Um, I knew writing on green on here was going to throw me. It has. I keep thinking it's contrast. How many years doing that? All right. So we have this pile of pieces here. 
And I like to lay my big pieces first. You can follow the cutting layout, but my experience with the cutting layout is never exactly what you're gonna get cut, right? Minus 18 Celsius. Okay, I don't even know what that means. That sounds really cold to an American, Sherry. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I'm trying to decide, maybe I actually want the fold towards me since the back is um, facing the other way. Because typically, I always put the fold there because then I could put this piece on the fold. That would be the back and this would be the front. Oh, uh, okay. That's how they do it, huh? All right. Yeah, th there was this one year recently in Washington State that um, they got so hosed with the weather. It was so uncharacteristic of that region that um, the kids, I think, got out of school like um, June 30th or something. <sighs> Poor things. It's not like during those snow days they can um, go play outside as much, you know? All right, I just flipped my fabric over. I'm putting the fold towards me. This fabric doesn't have a nap. It doesn't have a direction or anything like that, but I still am going to just take care and cut it as if it does. It's just a good practice. There's no sheen, there's no nothing. It's totally fine. I could flip pieces. Right now I'm just looking at the grain line. I can kind of see it's not as perpendicular to the fold as I would like to see it. Yeah, you can you can make things parallel to the, the selvage, but visually, if it looks off, it's off. So you, that's more important in my opinion. I just kind of smooth it like this to kind of get it. And then I'm going to look at the other side. Make sure that these lines are perpendicular to the fold. smaller than my full bust. You know, Rachel, um, I don't actually feel like I can answer that perfectly accurate because you have to remember my experience is not in custom fitting people. That does sound about right though. I've seen that exact same uh, piece of advice. What I would recommend you do is go to the Curvy Sewing Collective website, and that is made up of four gals. Does anyone know who this gal is? One of them is the Cashmere gal. One of them is, um, is it the Green Violet? Sorry. Um, I know, right, Eliza? And with the teal lining. So, um, you're in Ontario, okay. Um, I, Rachel, would go to that website. The Curvy Sewing Collective is made up of a few gals. And then they have all kinds of really great intensive instruction on fitting folks. Even if you're not curvy, it's, it's still really good information on doing those things. And they talk a lot about FBA. Like an FBA, in, in my world, didn't, I've never even heard of it until I came to the home sewing site. And it wasn't something that was an option for me. I've had a breast reduction, by the way. So um, this wasn't something I even knew about. I had that done pretty young. Um, so it's not like, um, I wouldn't have cared. It, I was, it was such, a, such a, a trying thing to be that busty at my age. Um, so 
I feel like FBAs are a new thing. They're a great thing too. They're, they're a new thing. So I don't have that much experience with it. And I'm not quite to the measurement that I would need one, but I did one on the Upton dress. Um, wait, was it the Upton I showed one, you guys? I showed it, I didn't use it, but I showed it. So it's actually really easy to do, which is great and kind of fun. It's kind of a fun pattern drafting trick. All right, so I'm going to line up my fold here. Really want to get your, don't ever say, oh, you know, more is better because more is not always better because your pattern pieces won't line up to the next piece unless you do the exact same more, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly, Sherry. Oh, did they know that? Oh, there you go. That's a great resource. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, hopefully you'll find, you'll at least find a good audience to ask as well and see what people, and you might even find someone with that exact same size um, adjustment that they do. All right, so the top one is the 18. I think I may need to change my cutter though. But I need to cut my, or change my blade too. I hate it when the, it cuts the paper. I'm gonna change my blade out. I'm gonna do it on this one because that one's getting wiggly. I love this stuff right here. <laughs> Not weird. <laughs> Sherry. No, I feel like they do a really good job of illustrating and there's lots of videos too on how to do it. But you're looking, like Rachel's looking for if she should, right? So there's my new line. I didn't put my arrows there and I literally almost cut that off. I would have been sad. I think there'd be enough fabric to uh, cut this piece again, but... <laughs> Scissors for the notches. Sorry, I'm a little off camera here. I don't take, uh, I'm not going to do those. I don't need the sleeve notch. Um, I don't take a chance when I'm having to press harder because it's thicker or um, stouter fabric that I would accidentally cut into the garment. That's why I'm not going to use the rubbery knife. All right, so this is the only. Probably oh, don't need to save my pattern piece, but we will. I'll make that decision when I prepare for tomorrow. One piece is done. Let's slide this over. And I can cut this off. I'd like to get it a little bit. This is the front of the coat, right? So I need to make sure everything's lining up. Can you see the toggle placements there? I'm so excited to sew toggles on. <laughs> right, Abilene? Exactly. Really, brown sugar? Oh. Maybe that's what I would do. Um, maybe I, when I get a replacement cutter, I will get a 60. Because I only need 145 now. I don't have another person in here sharing them, so... Um, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll try it out. Okay, here we go. So much nicer when you don't have to cut the paper and it's thick. So yeah, that is something to know. See how nice that was. And then when I go on the paper, it's going to tear it. Hmm. 
And then, you know, this person would like their pattern back, just in case they want to make another one, because I've made these adjustments. I'll have to apologize why they're so messy. But um, the fact that the it tears the paper a little bit while you're cutting is kind of a bummer. Let's look for some notches. I actually highlighted some of these in purple, so I would notice them. It's always a good idea to kind of look your pattern pieces over when you have a lot of them. Especially if you're like gonna watch a movie or listen to a book or something. Um, just make it really straightforward. Do all your thinking at once and then you can just go ahead and cut. I didn't really need that much, but all right. We have a pocket. See, and I even marked which pocket it was. I figured out my dotted line, and that way I don't have to sit here and figure it out in front of you guys. This is the pocket view for view A, we're doing view B. So I'm just gonna fold it on this line right here. Line it all up again. And then I'm gonna mark my pocket. What do you guys think? Do you guys think the like one side is a little softer and fuzzier, the other side is a little you can see the weave. They're not gonna feel the soft fuzzy side against them because it's lined. What do you think the right side is? Right, Rachel? <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean I I could have just cut all the paper. I just forgot that that would happen, you know. Let's see, what do I like? I kind of like the fuzzy side is the right side. It looks uh, the, like the right side. So I'm going to go for that. So that means I need to mark my pocket. I'm just going to put my pin through like this so I can see it. It's a patch pocket. For this many pattern pieces, I'm kind of surprised it's not a, a welt. You know? A little relieved. I know you guys would love to see me sew a welt again, but... Never mind sewing them, honestly. All right, so we got our pocket marked. I'm gonna save this piece anyway because of the toggle placement. I'm gonna hurt my blade. Yeah, I think fuzzy. I think you guys are right. That's what it looks like. It looks. It doesn't look fuzzy in the way that it looks like the um, like like fleece would, you know. This one doesn't fold. This one doesn't fit. And I think I decided to put the hood right there. Right. Really, Rachel? Ooh, that's right. I forgot you got those titanium blades. I might get those. So I've been, I was texting Brooke pictures yesterday. I mean, she doesn't say hi to Twitch again. Okay. Um, because when I'm setting up my cameras for the night before, I will be sitting there and sometimes I'm leaning over, touching my computer, using the keyboard if it's way over there still. And I can see the back of my head in the camera and it is the most unnerving thing. That is not what my head looks like in real life. So. I was texting, texting her pictures. I'm like, look at my hair color. Look at how crazy this is. Because this next to top of my head, you know, like that. And then I have this really dark, really dark underside. And so I was like, check this out. It's really drastic under this camera here, right? And then not so much in that one. And so she was like, oh yeah, that is crazy. So then Cricket came by to pick something up this morning. And she was totally self-examined. She's like, is that what I look like? And she was doing this because what you guys, like when you look in a mirror, you see a reflection of yourself, but in this camera, you, you're you seeing yourself as other people see you, and it's kind of it's kind of weird at first. It's, it's weird for a while, actually. And even she was like, wait, what's up with my hair color? <laughs> and she was like doing the same thing, and I was like, oh my god, thank goodness it's not just me. <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like those would be a really good um, investment, you know? All right, so let's do 
our bottom. I'm not doing the back and forth because it's thick. I'm doing it so that it doesn't push the fabric like this. I'm trying to get it backed righted. I don't like having the back of my blade towards the pattern, but um, because I've trimmed off the paper, it's still staying pretty accurate. All right, so we have a notch down here, the center. We have one right here, and it's not that one, it's this one. We have none over there. Beautiful. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing if they're Ulfa Brown because I accidentally once got fake Ulfa blades and I was really, really, really disappointed. They don't sell the 28 millimeter anymore at the at Joanne Fabrics for some reason, and it's one of my favorites. And um, so I had to buy them online, and I got not Ulfa. I returned them. I was like, mm, no, I thought I checked. All right, so this, because of this big long curve, I'm actually gonna rotate this so that my blade will be towards the hood. I just like it, it's more accurate. I can see everything I'm doing that way. So you can make view B with the collar, if you guys don't want a hood and you're making this. the lower one. I know because it crosses right there. Okay. And then we have two notches. I love sewing hoods. They really remind me of children's wear and active wear. <laughs> I love designing them too. I one time spent probably, I don't know, a whole month on this hood for this one jacket because it had to, it was like when things like new um, hardware was finally starting to come out and you could have like, we were figuring out how to make your hood adjustable with one hand so you didn't have to do this. And that, so I was like, I'm sure we can do this without, um, I'm sure we could do this because they, they didn't have the hardware quite yet. We were seeing people try and get it developed, but uh, it just wasn't happening. And then we started seeing people come out with jackets where you could do it one-handed, so it was really fun to figure it out. All right, so we have, I want to call this the peplum, but it's not really a peplum. <laughs> I'm gonna stay away from this wrinkle right here. It feels more like a it's not, I don't want to say stretched out, but it feels a little too stubborn. So I'm just going to cut around it and it's working perfectly to do that. Um, sometimes I just don't want to engage with some of those weird things because they may be permanent. You know what I mean? You know that garment that you have to iron. Yeah, exactly. A lot of imposters, exactly. Oh yeah, sure. Well, these these were from a factory that I um, bought that went out of business. But these are just old irons, and they're my favorite because the big handle. They're kind of expensive, but you can find them at art uh, antique stores, and they work so great. They're nice and flat. You just got to find them that not rusting and make sure that it is flat. They can be anywhere between like eight and um, like twenty two dollars. Just hold out. But definitely get it with the handle. Because I find the ones that don't have the handle, like I have one that's like like this thick. Has a little cup in it for the coals. Um, when I sometimes grab that one, my um, fingertips go slide right off and I'll break the tips of my nails. It, which is just kind of annoying. So just make sure you get the handle. 
I, I just find these to be so great because you don't have to pay for shipping. So even though they cost a little more, at least you're saving on the shipping because <laughs> they are weights. <laughs> they weigh a lot. All right, so we go. I want this outer notch, which is hidden in these lines right here. That's why I like making it a T, the notch. Triangles are a little hard to see, but I don't see any others. All right, now we need to get all the fun little pieces. gift sewing. Is anyone gift sewing? <laughs> oh, you did? That's great. <laughs> oh. Are you going to put um, the link in there? You're still here, Brooke? Cool. She may, uh, hi, Julia. You have a shirt to make for your gift knitting, your gift, get knitting. I'm sure you have gift knitting going on too. <laughs> I do too, I have one sitting over there that's almost done. Maybe I'll finish it today. All right, so we have this long facing. Because there's a fold right here though, I may want to take advantage of the fact that there's a fold first. So let's just look, let's just see what we have. We have sleeve pieces, the sleeve is in two pieces. And then we have all these little doodads. So we obviously have plenty of fabric. We are good there. These kinds of facings, I always fit kind of funny, you know? We got this little big piece over here. I can probably put the hood, you only need one of those. Um, you need the pocket. Let's put these pieces near each other. They're about the same size. With this one here, the center front band. Center front? Oh, down the. I was thinking on the waist. Oh, nice, Mon. Oh, you made your aprons and, and your kitchen matching kitchen towel. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome, Julia. I know that fabric. <laughs> Did you guys see, um, it might be Green One Studio, they have this like ornament they always give away. I know, brown sugar, right? <laughs> um, they have an ornament pattern they always give away, and this year's I was kind of like, yeah, that's cute, but the past years, there's like a narwhal and something else. They were pretty, they were pretty cool. I almost did that. I got the email like the week we did the gift sewing, so I couldn't really add it that week, but I was like, oh, this would be so great. I need two of these. So these are going to go here. I'm just kind of washing my grain lines. It is a little bit um, stubborn. So if you guys haven't checked out the hashtag for this jacket, totally encourage you. It's pretty inspiring. There's some really cute ones. Always a good way to gauge how it comes together when you just see all those happy faces wearing their coats and people being like, this was one of my favorite mates. You're like, okay, good. <laughs> I love seeing that. All right, we don't need. So, right, this one. Right, these are my least favorite pieces to cut, long skinny pieces. You guys know what I mean? They're just my least favorite. I always feel like they were the things I would cut the worst for years. I did the worst job at cutting them accurately. But sometimes it's those things that 
I'm not going to say that that this is one of those things, but sometimes it is things that you don't like doing a lot that you end up getting so good at, you know? Maybe I'll feel that way about these one day. So when I have my fingers here, I'm always holding the fabric so that it stays and doesn't move too much. Because you can, I don't know if you can see that it does push away a little bit from the blade. Alright, we have some notches right here. I saw that um, one co person posted a picture of this and that there was a contrast little piece that the zipper was sewn to. I kind of want to add that because I feel like I feel like you cut that in lining and I'm not sure this lining would be great for that so it would be a good spot to have some fun. You know? Oh they have Rachel? Are you able to post the link? Because um, if you aren't maybe Brooke can pop over onto YouTube and she might allow it. I don't know. I've allowed people to post links, but I, I th I've heard it doesn't work. Like you guys have said, I can't post it. <laughs> All right, so. Let's get rid of a lot of these pieces. This is only one layer, so I'm going to hold it off. Let's get rid of all these square pieces here. I can do this and this. Uh, these are a green line like this, and that. I don't understand when it's on the fold, people assume that that's the green line, but that's not always the case. Yeah, no. I feel like this is the first year in a long time I've been super prepared for the holidays and I'm really glad. I think I just was like, yeah, I'm not doing that much, but not in a bad way, you know? Um, I, I want, I love making my gifts, but sometimes it's just too overwhelming. Um, but I actually did make quite a few this year and I only have one to finish. And then Terry, I'm making my reversible archer button up. I'm not letting myself do that or bind my cat quilt until I have everything done. And we all need to talk about like what are our goals for next year. So I think I'm going to put together a survey because I would really like to get your guys' feedback on what you would like to see more of, what would you like to see less of. Bye Abilene! Have a nice night! You can see it. Oh, we can't. That's so funny. <laughs> the link you're talking about, right? Um, because I was thinking about like maybe making a, like a occasional segment where we have like people can email questions. Like I really want to cover this particular thing and maybe it's just like a small little tutorial. And then once we have a few, we do them all in one, one um, stream. Like kind of like a, I don't know, ask a sewist or something, you know? Um, maybe it's, hey, I need this one little fit issue. I was thinking that. If there's specific how-to tutorials you'd like that are night, that are standalone little tutorial, like 10 minutes long rather than not like having to search through <laughs> a three hour live stream for how to print PDF patterns, you know? Because um, I keep saying I'm going to add some more of those, but I would really like to prioritize what you guys are interested in. Alright, we've got both these pieces now. And next year, like, what are our goals? I was seeing, I saw someone ask, like, what are your main sewing goals? And I was like, what are my main sewing goals? You know? Did you guys see the, did you guys see the link? I didn't see the 
the link. You still have Christmas PJs for your granddaughter and your sister. Oh yeah, that's right, Liz. That's you with the chicken quilt. That was really cute. <laughs> a bear. It was a bear, yeah. No little kids are like <laughs> I remember one year my mom kind of went overboard and the we couldn't even walk near the tree. I was like the heck? <laughs> it was a little too much. Alright. Remember pocket. I have notches on the inner lining and that'll be enough. If they go together. Riffy. Okay, great. Got it, got it. Okay, I got it. Thank you. That's awesome. All right, so this is on the fold, but do I really want to cut this out in the middle of the fabric? Only if I can fill all that up, which I think I can. Um, this is also on the fold. I just need one little guy there. Um, this is on, this one's on the fold. So maybe I can put my sleeves over there. And we could do these like this. Yeah. Like this, like this. And then we'll do our single hood right there. And that and we're almost done with the self. We still have the lining and the interlining video, you guys. <laughs> I don't think I'll cut everything in the intro lining though, you know, just the main body pieces and the sleeve and that's it. So it's a lot less. And I may do that off camera. I'll just show you what I'm going to do. I just need one of these, right? I'm used to cutting more than one yoke. Yeah, but I think I'd like to try my hand at trying to sew, like, I want to know what it's like to sew a bra and underwear. And I would like to do a sew along with you guys. Sorry, I just like almost fell against the table there. Yeah, I didn't get around to it either, um, Malin. Thank you, Sherry, for writing that in there. Okay, good to know. They're extremely sharp. Okay. And the drafting streams. Okay. I'm down for the drafting streams. Yes, exactly, Julia. Yeah. I know. I know. I saw those too. I was like, ooh, this looks fun. That one that's like, a, I think a fabric store posted and I don't know, it was like the um, fabric, the little contrast band the zipper sewn to is just like the whole coat is just very basic and simple, but that little contrast zipper band is so nice.
<laughs> it's so it's so thick. Okay. All right, that's good. I'm like getting rid of all these pins off everything. I want to make a dog coat too, but then someone gifted Loki one. It doesn't really go around his little middle. His little middle. He's not overweight, but he is a little barrel, you know? Yeah. Got caught on paper there. I am clipping the little center right here. I like to do that so that I know where that's at. Typically, this kind of facing does get sewn to the lining. This is, I like to call these, um, they're called like a hanger appeal facing, right? So when you have it hanging on a hanger, you still see the regular fabric of the coat, um, not the lining of the garment. I think uh, Ella Mason calls it a pajama facing, which I think is another great way to put it. All right, so this one is on the fold. Put this down here. I need two of those. Two of these. Alright, I'm looking at the green line. So I kind of want to do kind of want to open this up, uh, but I think I actually have enough. Because it would be kind of a shame if I did that and I did these, right? And then I don't have room for this guy, but it looks like I do. Because I only need one. So I could technically fold this differently so that I have a bigger piece here and then this is on one piece of its own, but I think it's almost more work than is necessary. This is on the fold. This is just a cut on the curve. And then we have this one. So I think we're okay. Let me zoom over that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I need underwire bras too. Kind of left those behind. I wear them actually. What am I talking about? I have hated them and I've liked them. Um, I didn't see the ones with the tapes, but I just saw like, like, um, you know, it's like the piece of fabric that goes behind the zipper and then the piece of fabric that with the zipper sewn to it coming out from the coat. So you have like a facing so that, you know, your garment doesn't get caught in the zipper. And it's that little piece of fabric that the zipper is sewn to, they've done in a contrast. I can't remember the name of that person who did that, but it was really cool. All right, so I'm gonna do the sleeves first, then the hood. Is this kind of tedious for you guys today? I hope not. I've been planning this for a while, so I'm kind of excited that we're, it's here, you know? It's gonna be fun to sew. these tops of stitched on that. Yeah, it is. That is, would be really pretty. I didn't see those. Maybe I did and I thought it was something else. Yeah, I think a dog coat would be really easy. Now that someone gave them one, I'm like, darn it. I feel like they robbed me <laughs> of the opportunity. I've always wanted to make a dog coat, you know? And then um, I think it was Beverly that was kind enough to send me a picture of one from someone's video of one that they use in a, a simplicity pattern. She heard me talking about it. Like I've asked people, can I knit your dog a coat? And they're like, Lena doesn't really wear those. I'm like, oh, 
Well, that's no fun. <laughs> So it looks like you ease the um, sleeve together through these dart uh, notches. That means it'll probably fit really nice over bulky materials. This is like a classic version of a what is called a two-piece sleeve in coat making. I'm sure Terry tells all about it. Do a little bit of an angle since we don't sit with our arms straight down like this you know we actually have this little bend in our arm that's what this is the elbow right there classy nice. your snowflakes are done all the glitter is done nice oh i know right eliza but in a way maybe that is why we think about making a bra I think a lot of women come to bra making because they can't find the bra that fits them. You know? Yeah, Terry, you're, you're kind of like, I don't sew it unless it has a two-piece sleeve. <laughs> Did someone release a dog hoodie recently? What? one of those. And now let's do all these fiddly, narrow things. And we're almost done with the cool. So we have this here. Just need one. But I kind of be able to see it. extra right there that I added to the hem for the um, addition of the hip. I'm really pulling that away because I don't want to cut into that by accident. And I'm going to launch this right here. I'm pretty sure I didn't launch that. Terry, you're beginning to hate setting them in a little less. I remember that. I know, right? I feel like I think teachers really do appreciate that stuff, but and on the other hand, there's sometimes they're like, yeah, but if you knew what I put up with all day. <laughs> you know? Okay, so we just need one layer of that. To utilize the best I can. We've got our sleeve over here. I'm going to sneak that in there. Not really. Let's do really this. I have plenty of fabric, you guys. I don't even really need to be this concerted, but um, there's at least a yard. I mean, the, the sleeve's going to kind of cramp that, but um, there's at least a yard. And they, they might have a use for it, you know? Matching handbag, anyone? <laughs> facing in you're like why does my hem flare why does it do that weird thing
don't know Julia, this is uh, someone else that sent me the material. I can ask them though. I didn't measure the fabric before I started cutting into it, sorry about that. But um, I'll ask them because um, that would be good to know. They may have been like, oh, I'll round up. Or sometimes you know how um, fabric companies don't allow you to buy half yards? So it could have called for three and a half yards and they bought four. But there's quite a bit here. I'll show you in a second. You're making a, the crossover bag, Megan? This is that piece right here. Okay. So remember, I have to seam this together. I have so many pieces there, it's filling out. All right, so now we have this. Of our hood, and that's it. I can, I can really see the green line. That's why I'm bothering, not bothering to look at the selvage. The weave is more important. This is the sleeve hem facing. So it'll get sewn to the edge of the sleeve and then the sleeve lining as well. So millennia, this whole coat, like the the lining looks like it's attached to the bottom. Meaning um, the lining and the jacket are sewn together. Rather than the lining hanging free. But if you're having trouble getting your lining, like what I would do is make sure you press everything really well. Get it all oriented, pin your shoulders together, all that. And then hang it up on a hanger and see what the lining's doing. Yeah, exactly, Lynn, I'm sure. Yeah, that's so cool, Lynn. That sounds so nice. That's the maker's jacket that you're making, right? Oh my gosh, what is going on here? Yeah, I needed to see that too. You want a heavy duty strap for your bag, Megan? Could you make one? If you made it the way we made that one for um, the hillside toe, where you don't have to turn it, you know, right side out, um, I feel like that's a pretty easy way. Because then you could you could make it yourself, and then you don't um, you could do it pretty thick, and you're just edge stitching, you know. Because webbing sometimes is is an ideal, you know. But you could always use webbing. That would be a good choice. All right, let's get rid of this weird piece here. I can really feel it when it's perfectly on grain. The blade's just like, there's barely any resistance when I'm going across the fabric. It's a good feeling. One lining, one self. So this is the one pattern piece, and I think also no, and the hood that I need to cut in lining as well. All the others um, are just self or self and interfacing. All right, last piece. So see, this is what I have left. Uh, easily a yard. Yeah, it's 44 inches, and I'm going to bite into it with the sleeve. I cut the size 18, Julia, and it made it a little wider, but the width didn't make any difference on the fabric usage. I would have cut it this way anyway, if that helps. Oh, that's so exciting, Melinda. I'm so excited for you.
That's a good idea, Rachel. Oh, that's right, you have the fluffy lining. Did you use shearling? Because I looked everywhere for shearling for um, that shirt I want to show you guys. See, the great thing about this pattern is it's really easy to decide what line it is, mainly because I'm doing the last line, and the smallest one is the solid line, so I know I don't cut the solid line. <laughs> Thank goodness. Have you ever rotary knife the tip of your nail off? I've only done it a couple times, but I definitely was like, oh, that was a little close. Okay, so this is our fabric piece. One little scrap to go with it, but maybe I could use this as a test piece of fabric to sew with. That's good advice too. Pad the hanger. I was thinking the exact same thing. Those like antique uh, wood coat hangers are so nice for coats like this one. I really, it really bugs me when I find something in my closet that's dusty because I haven't worn it so long. You have, sure, yeah. Chopping vegetables, ooh, that would be that would be a little scarier for me. I don't know why. Maybe because it's a knife and I'm really comfortable with a rotary knife. But I did one time buy my husband um, kitchen scissors, like for cutting parts of a chicken apart, you know. I thought this was like so great because I'm so <laughs> scissor oriented, you know. And um, I, um, he hardly ever uses them, but I, I get them out because that's, and I think he even said it's too hard to squeeze them. They're so sharp. They're not hard at all to squeeze. They're so awesome. Love those things. So yeah, if you, and I've seen a lot of things where they will cut, <laughs> they will cut um, other things like those, you know, they're really handy. <laughs> Hi, Ray. How's it going? You're selling wedding gifts? Oh my gosh. Oh no, Eliza. Oh no. That's that's a good lesson for folks. That happened to, in uh, college. Uh, I was in a uh, color theory class. It didn't happen in class. Um, but uh, this uh, gal didn't come to school the next day or the next class. And it was for my color theory class where we had to paint all the chips and we would make these value charts. It's actually the hardest class I took in college because um, color is so subjective, but the instructor does know what they're doing, you know? So, um, yeah, she had really cutting the, the pieces of paint chips. And this is exactly what she did with the exacto. She wasn't cut anytime soon. <laughs> it was pretty bad, but she saved her. They saved her finger. So, <laughs> but I remember every time I am close to my ruler with my rotary knife. What was that? Almost thirty years ago, you guys, and I still wait. Was it almost thirty years? Ago? Yeah, 
Um, it was almost exactly 30 years ago that that happened. I still think about it every time I use my blade with a ruler. All right, so I'm gonna move these toggles aside. I don't wanna lose one. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, exactly. Kitchens are so great, I know. Okay, um, so here's my zipper, I'm gonna put this aside. Now we just have our lining. Here and we have the intra lining, which I might do off camera. And for the intra lining, I think what I'll do is the hood of the body and the sleeve. I won't do the facings or the zipper parts or the pocket. I'll only do the body pieces, and that's it. Um, and I think. I might think about it before I cut it because I could do this two ways. I could do the flannel inner lining, the lining pieces, and then there would be fewer seams because I was a little concerned about the thickness because I have to sew the wool to the wool. Plus I'd have the flannel inner lining. So it's four layers, plus there's probably top stitching. So I, what I just realized I probably could, I'm gonna do some research, maybe I will cut the flannel the same as the lining. There's also an added benefit that you're not perforating it um, and adding holes, and that just comes from my like my waterproof, breathable fabric days. But the more perforations you put in it, the more you weaken it and you, and you, you have air, right? So it could be actually a little better. I don't think it would be much, though. I doubt it's measurable by us, you know? So, oh, God. Yeah. All right, so um, let's do our lining. So it's a just a traditional slippery lining. And you know, these are so underrated because um, I think we all want that really flashy lining. And they're kind of hard to find on a slippery fabric. Rayon's not quite the same. You could use it, but it's not quite the same. And it's so nice when you put a coat on and it doesn't get hung up on anything you're wearing. Am I right? Because I have, I like, I wear a lot, of, a lot of hand knit sweaters, and it's part of my outfit, right? It's not an overcoat, so I really want to put my coat over it. And sometimes the sleeves are belled, and sometimes they're bulky. And getting my coats on, like the tamarack, forget it. They just get bunched up in there, and I'm like, okay, I'm only driving a mile, it'll be okay, you know. But it would be nice if it were just a slippery lining. They're less bulky. Um, they aren't very warm, but they also make it so you can wear warm things underneath real easy. So, yeah, it's actually a teal. It doesn't show up on the camera. I wor really worked on it, and then I was like, yeah, it's not going to show up. I even ironed it, but then all the wrinkles came back after I folded it back up. I'm not a fan of cutting these out. They're so loosey-goosey, you know? Oh, my pattern piece is getting a little munched. Okay, so let's, let's make this nice and flat. That's going to go over there. This, I think, is not on the fold. Yep. We have a sleeve, sleeve, and hood. Not very many pieces. Plus, uh, this is that zipper band I'm telling you about. I will cut it in this lining, but I'm going to think about that. We might want something else. This might not be ideal for that zipper band. They don't really tell you that when you're buying your fabric, and then on the pattern piece it says, or you could cut this in a fun fabric, and it's like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, but Sawyer Brook Fabrics, I've never heard of that. Is that a um, online fabric store? I know, Sherry, I know, it's teal. It's can you look at maybe in my camera? It's dark, but it's teal. Royal blue would be really fun. Did you see the Pantone color over the year? I was kind of surprised. I feel like I've been gravitating towards that color in the last year and a half, and I was like, oh, I'm never on trend. 
<laughs> It'll be hard to find this color. And then when I saw it was a color later, I was like, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not usually a follower. I'm just pulling it so that the uh, fabric is nice and straight and flat because you see it gets all wiggly. You know? Alright. You gotta do your best. Look at this nice shape here. That must mean you have some room to do this. Okay, let's look at this green line. Um, I may flip this over. My silver isn't lining up very well right there. It's a little cramped on this table, you guys. I really like it to make be bigger, but I can't make the the camera bigger, so it doesn't matter. So this grain line is that even parallel? Let's see, that's eleven. Oh wait, I'm doing the green line. Doesn't matter what number it is, as long as it's the same spot. Oh no, it's not at all. Okay, so that is parallel. What an optical illusion. Can I get this over here? Remember, I have to go, I have to include this bit here. It's my altered bit. No. Too forced. Yeah, peacocks are good. It looks teal? Okay. The peacock would be a good way to describe it. But I know people have strong feelings about what they call teal. Come on, let me get these in here. Maybe I can do this. I have plenty of fabric, but you know, I'm being thrifty. <laughs> one and I want it to stay flat, so I'm gonna put a ruler down. It's not it's not like perfect but it helps. Okay, so this will go here. So let's cut this. This is when you really want a sharp blade. Ooh, I bet all of you went, ooh, we actually cut <laughs> you know, night one. No, it was like a, uh, I want to call it Delft Blue. Kind of like a royal, but brighter. Spoonflower's been talking about it. If you go to their um, Instagram, or maybe it was in the newsletter. Hubba hubba. You know? Cutting this kind of, oh, I didn't get two notches on that sleeve back there. I just noticed that. This is the line. You can do better. Well, usually, right? Okay, let's get, pull this away. Yeah, they showed a stack of fabric all printed in that color. It was really pretty.
so we've got the selvage, which is kind of nice. We can actually line it up with a um, line on the table. So cooperate. I'm pulling it. Nice and straight. <laughs> Oh, really, Julia? That's funny. <laughs> you tried. <laughs> but I believe you. I bet these get snapped up really fast, the fun linings, you know? Ooh, that's way. But look at how shallow this piece is right here. I don't know if I'm going to get this. I don't think I'm going to get this. Some of you are wondering probably, do I really take this time, much time to cut things out? I don't. I, I cut corners just like you guys do. You know what I mean? Yeah, me too. I, this is one of my favorite colors. Everybody knows it though. It's funny, when I met a friend of mine um, that I used to be really close friends with, this was her favorite color when I met her and I didn't get it at the time. Like I actually was like, oh, that's interesting. And she loves pairing it with coral, which is really stunning, you know? But, um, I don't know, all of a sudden, I, and it wasn't because of her, I can't remember what it was, but it, I really, I think it was because I put it with something else. Like, it was like, I ended up using it for something, and I really started, like, wanting it for everything. I tried to use anything but this color in my logo, um... I did actually. I did manage to do that, but I end up using it, picking it up. Okay, I need to come all the way to here. Let's see, I'm not sure I got this. Let's see. I can use this piece for sleeves if I really want. But with lining, I do take my time because I do find that lining, when you cut it really carefully, it sews together. And it is the part that we fret about the most when we go to sew a jacket, a fully lined jacket. I feel, feel like a lot of people are like, oh my God, a fully lined jacket, that's a lot of, like, it's scary, you know. And um, I understand that. I feel that way too sometimes. Taking your time and making sure your grain line is pretty good, like, as good as possible. And... Um, cutting it out really accurately, try not to let any of it shift while you do it. If, if they are identical and correct, and you, sew, you cut everything else out correct, it will sew together so much easier, and you'll have far fewer issues. So um, that's why I am fussing with it. I don't want to have any issues. This isn't, isn't my jacket, you know? I can't just make like a decision like, yeah, well, I'm just going to use this other thing. You know what? I was thinking that was my line. It's not my line. Told you guys, I get really lazy when I put these new lines on there. I start doing whatever I want. I have to, like, scream at myself, don't cut off what you added. Okay. I'm gonna inspect it a little bit and see if I got it. This is my notch. This is my notch. It got pulled. This is okay. But look right here. That actually isn't where I want that notch. It actually is way down here. I might be okay. I might be okay. Let's see. With that happen steam loss, I think that's going to save me. This notch right here, I know for a fact I cut on the size 18 line because it's right there. That's the size 18 line, it's the dashes. That notch right there, that's the smallest size notch. 
Because see, here's the small size notch, and it's a solid line, and this one has a dash in it. Whoops. Something happened there. But it'll be fine. It's just a guide for uh, sewing them together. So. Oh, right? I know, Sherry. That would be awesome. I mean, I, I love Spoon Farm for that. You know, as far as lining fabric goes, though, what would I use? Of the spoon flower fabric, let me just look at it real quick, you guys. These are my old swatches. Yeah, I don't want to look at this actually. Wait, does this one look like this? this? I mean, maybe. See, I've done the silky file and it's really heavy. It would make a nice lining, but it would make your jacket really heavy. Um, and it's hot, because um, it's polyester. These are all natural fiber. Probably the main, mm, this is too lightweight. I don't actually know if they have a good lining fabric that I would use. I've been thinking about this because they don't really have a lot of garment specific fabrics. Maybe the satin? Polyester still. These are all knits. Yeah, I got, I'm not really thinking they have the most ideal lining fabric. I hope that the, the next fabric they introduce is rayon. Um, because I feel like they, they could probably find a printable rayon. That wouldn't be too hard. Or the, um, the polyester. Like a polyester thing. But... It is really hard to find a good one. So. Oh, cool, right? I love a brocade lining. I think I missed a couple of your guys' comments here, so make sure. Whatever line with a brocade, I would, yeah. Yeah, if there's a lot of metal in it, you will find that it can be a little scratchy. Um, but a lot of but they don't all have metal in it. You know, I'm thinking of the right thing, right? Ragged bone paisley silk. Oh, I don't like paisley so. Yeah, exactly, right, Julia? It is. So I think that silky file actually would be a good choice of spoon flower. I have made something on camera with it, and it was the uh, Sokka kimono. Who was that by you guys? Paper theory or paper cut? All right, what am I doing? What am I doing? Let me focus. I can't use this piece right here. Oh, this is it. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. I can ride these up for the hood. I still need the body, but look at I have all this power. No problem. Okay. We'll put the sleeve right here. Don't you love it when it starts sliding off the table and it's like a snake? It's just like Yeah, it's I really want to put the selvage towards me so I can adjust it, but I really want this piece right here. Not pop crazy. Okay. Isn't that funny, Julie? That your name showed up red, then showed up green. I wonder if that's when, because Sherry's name color changed today too. I wonder if that's when you leave the stream, look at something else, and come back, and it changes your color. You know? Because I kind of get used to who's who by the color. <laughs> and YouTube's not helping me. All right, so. We're almost done, you guys. Thanks for bearing with me for this epic cutout. I'm getting a little wobbly. Oh man, the new blade and lining. So wonderful. I'm not glasses on. 
not great for this this distance right here. I'm noticing. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> Thanks for following Fearless Finders. <laughs> I was like deep in the zone there. So did you guys see on Instagram that Bryant on Twitch had clipped the me ironing the pizza fabric? <laughs> it was what he named it. I'm assuming Bryant is a he, and um, he named it. Um, this is how how sewists reheat their leftovers. <laughs> that was hilarious. It was the title, Bryant. It was genius. Like, even my friend, like, in real life that I walk with, she was like, oh, my gosh, that pizza thing was so funny. Like, I know. So funny. All right. Just a little left. Just, um, oh, yeah, I have this, too. Sorry. So let's do the pocket with this scrap. Yeah, I wonder if that is Julia. No, oh, it's not Jerry. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it's okay, Fearless. I'm uh, streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, so you'll see me kind of bounce back between the chats. Sorry if I ignore you a little bit over there. I'm not trying to. This does not look teal on the screen. I think I might actually be able to get my... No, I won't. I was just deeply concentrating in a little alert. I've been trying to modify those alerts so I can actually read the name because the color wasn't working out for me. So. All right. So tomorrow we'll start sewing this coat, the Cascade Double Coat by uh, Grain Line Studios. Um, and if you're at all interested in sewing this coat one day, I totally recommend looking at the hashtags on Instagram. It's really helpful, especially because you really don't want to make it because of the um, all the options and all the colors. Like, I'm ready to make me one now. Really cute, really inspiring. People say it goes together really easily. And we'll sew part one tomorrow. And I think right off the bat, you tackle the zipper. I'm saving these pieces for my scraps for sewing them. You sew the zipper right off the bat, and it'll probably assemble the coat in general, like the um, yokes to the body and to the bottom. Um, so it'll start looking like a coat pretty quickly. And you do the pocket as well. Me too, Sherry. I know, so it, it's uh, it's gonna be a good one. Don't I have? Oh, I have a really big piece. I have a lot to sew or cut. What am I talking about? I have the body to still cut. My stomach's starting to growl. I need to get a move on here. And um, I so you guys, thanks for letting me take Saturday off. That was key. I we ended up spending Saturday, Sunday, and Monday all day moving my husband's grandma. And we just knocked it out. Like on Saturday, I was like, yeah, let's do this. We can do this. And then I got to her place, and I was like, oh, this is um, this is a little more than I thought. My husband, too, we were both kind of like, whoa, OK. We've been there a million times. We were just kind of deluding ourselves into thinking that it wasn't very big. And it's not. We got it all done. So we literally moved her out, got rid of some of the things she needed to get rid of, cleaned things set her up in her new place and redecorated everything all in three days. It really, it really wasn't bad because we could do all that, so. <laughs> Hi, Soda Fit. How's it going, Andrea? Nice, nice. Oh, you're about that editing life. You are a brave soul. I have to edit a video for something today. I'm like, I'm already dreading it. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I have my moments, 
You guys see my moments. All right, I'm gonna slide this a little bit. Have you made this coat, Andrea? The it's the um, Cascade Duffel Coat by Greenline Studio. I should use the clips to hold the fabric together. Yeah, that doesn't work for me. I think pinning the whole selvage and the fold is the smartest thing. I should have told you guys that. So what I should have done yesterday was laid out the fabric, the lining, pinned the selvage, pinned the fold, and then it would have been righted, right? And it's just like I thought, oh, maybe I'll have to open it up. I know I should have just done that because I could have opened up sections. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't, the layers don't have to be even as long as they're all on grain, you know? Ooh, I almost cut this extra off. So to fit, okay, Andrea. Well, maybe I'm not going to bug you about a question about sizing, but, um, Someone had a really good question about doing an FBA, and it's not Sherry, I think it's for Rachel that asked that. But um, if you're still here, Soda Fit does really great instruction on sizing, and she's also a live streamer on YouTube, and so I thoroughly recommend, thoroughly, heartily recommend checking out her streams um, and her Patreon because she focuses on fit, I focus on fit, but I feel like she has more experience, oh crap, um, with things like that, like custom, whereas mine would be more industry and fitting myself, and I know how to fit things, I know how to fix fit issues, but she knows that, probably your question off the top of your, her head. So I would totally join her sometime. I'm gonna go off the end of my table here. And just have this. Like if I see something and I need to adjust like a uh, fit of it issue in front of me, I know exactly what to do, right, with the fabric and all that. But yours was like a question where you actually had the numbers and exactly what you were looking for. Yeah, and I think that she would be able, you, you could put your question into words, whereas some fit issues aren't, you know, they're more like tangible where you see them in front of you. Yeah, she's really good at that. All right, I'm doing all my notches. Just one right, did I get this one? It's a humpback coat. I don't usually keep my pattern pieces like these kinds, but I'm going to, you know. All right, now we're almost done. I keep telling you guys, we're almost done. <laughs> colors so I could eat this it's so pretty in person all right so we just need one of those so we need two of these and I need uh, this one little piece here but this is that zipper band I'm talking about cut for lining or coordinating fabric not about that. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, who was that that asked that, Effie? Wasn't it one of the Rachels? You're all individuals. I know. You're all individual, Rachel. But yeah, I think her question was her high bust and her full bust are eight inches different. Yeah, thanks, Ray. She gets to move in there tomorrow. I really want to see, uh, like, how she likes it firsthand, but I'm going to be streaming, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss it. Maybe I don't want to be there for that. Maybe she won't like it. <gasps> what if she doesn't like it? Um, all right, so I can get this. Um, I can get all four of these. I'm not going to cut this out. I'm going to talk to the person and see about this. I wonder if I can show you a picture of what I'm talking about. 
Can you bear with me for a second and I will show you this picture of this piece. I'm going to show you guys. Um, please let me be in my account. Okay, yeah. So just, I'll show my screen in just a second. Okay, duffel coat. Let me find the... All right, so I'm going to show you my um, computer screen. It's going to be really weird at first. Oh, shoot. No, it's not. It's not going to... Oh, there it is. Okay. I can't see the chat for a second. So this is the hashtag, all right? So let me show you the pattern piece I'm talking about. Um, I, I was actually looking for a while this morning. So I, I had scrolled pretty far. Okay, I've gone too far. I hadn't seen those yet. There it is, this one. You see that, you guys? You see this little piece right here that the zipper is sewn to? That's what I'm talking about. You know? So, um... What do you guys think? Yeah, it's a full inch difference, exactly. High and full inch. Yeah. I can scroll back on the first question, but it was early on in the stream. So you see this, you guys? See how there's this little crumb? Isn't this beautiful, by the way? I, I this is a uh, uh, um, English, I think, company, uh, fabric store. I'm getting tired. <laughs> but look at that according. So that's what I'm talking about. So doing the. Um, Doing, no, no, okay. Doing the, um, the, that little piece and this lining doesn't seem like a great idea. You know what I mean? I know, this, this, yeah, exactly. It's a nice little pop of color. And I love that the teal would be beautiful. I think it's just too lightweight. That's my point. So, um. I don't know what they use. I, it looks like it, they don't explain it. They actually just say, "Isn't this person's, you know, cascade duffel coats coming together so well?" So maybe I could like poke around and see who that was because it wasn't one of them. It was like a maybe a, a customer. So uh, it does. It looks just like a print cotton, right? So I know that's why I was like, I could just use the um, the self, you know. What if I interfaced the lining heavily? That would work, right? Those little things are wood. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm going to think about it. I need to know by tomorrow because um, I think we sew that right off the bat. <laughs> it's always exciting. Maybe uh, something that coordinated that's exactly the same color group, like a print. I have no shortage of, I think, fabrics that would coordinate with teal, that's for sure. All right, so it's weird that there's no neck notches. Did I get that? Okay, I did. Always good to check. I sometimes get so nervous about doing using the rotary knife that I don't even get it. I get like this little tiny nib, and then when I'm sitting in the sewing machine, I'm like, is this my notch? This is a an error. Okay, so. I'm going to put that up top. And we have, how many times have I said we had two pieces left? Hmm. 
Oh, um, are you trying? Are you saying what do I think as far as like the Kelly Anarch versus this one? I think so too, Ray. Ray. It was a, it was a couple hours ago. I think Rachel laughed. That Rachel that asked. I think it was Rachel Meyer. <laughs> two short days ago, exactly. <laughs> you think so, Eliza? I think so too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, one of the gals in that hashtag, Andrea, um, she had made both. She made the Kelly Anna and this. She was the very first picture. Did you see that jewel toned coat? It was really pretty. The blonde white girl. She had um, this jewel toned one of these. And then I looked at her page, and she had made two anoraks in totally different color to fabrics, one of them like as a ski parka. So she really likes that pattern. I think you're good if you have it and you want to use it. Yeah. <laughs> which, is, which one is more ready to wear like, ooh, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm sitting here cutting this piece out, but I don't plan on cutting it. I just need one of these. I will use this if I need to, but I just need this. I'm going to line up my grain line to the fold there. I think, um, I think, I think you're good either way, Andrea. Oh, I bet Rachel. That's um, that's a legit issue, huh? Could you make them three quarter length sleeves, or would that just defeat the purpose? Cause I know for me, my mom um likes long sleeves, but she also doesn't like them all the way too long. She's a pretty petite gal, and she also just doesn't like them getting mucked up with things, you know, like her sleeves getting gross. And I'm the same way, like when I would make some of my sweaters, I would make them three quarter sleeves. Like that scrappy sweater you guys saw me wearing, I was three quarter sleeves in the mainly because it was, it was like wearing a blanket. It was so hot with all those, all those different yarns and stuff. I haven't checked Twitch in a while, sorry guys. You like all the bells and whistles, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, right, right, I know. It help it helps to see what I'm talking about because um that pattern piece actually probably has an official name, but I don't know it. <laughs> and it's funny because I remember sometimes we would be doing some pattern in, in like her like whatever where I was working at company and we would be doing something a little different than normal and we're all like I don't know the official name of this pattern piece and then you dig you know start diving in the you know, fashion books, fun, but <laughs> the factory, sometimes the factory knows and you don't. Like if you're, con if you're contracting to a factory outside of your place, they've probably seen such a diverse array of things, they know what it's called. And so I would always ask first the sample maker on the floor and then I would ask the factory. <laughs> you think it would be too contrasty to put something right there? Hmm. Oh, yeah, Rachel. I wonder if you could replace... It would be nice if you could have removable cuffs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. If, I think Rachel Meyer may have taken off, Sherry. When we see her again, we can let her know to check out Andrea's stream because I think her... And we told her to go to the Kirby Sewing Collective. I should have told her to go to Sew to Fit. That would have been a good... That's real time. We like the real time. Okay, uh, let's see, what do I have left? Just the inner lining. So um, I'm gonna search through my pattern pieces, but actually I'm thinking I might use the lining. So this is just a flannel, looks like ticking. Oh, you're still here, my Rachel? Okay, did you see, did you hear, um, so another live streamer right now is in our chat, so to fit, Andrea is her name, and she has a lot of really great experience with sizing and um, fit. She might be a really good person to check out her stream or ask the question to. She sounds like she'd, she'd answer it if you want to ask her right now.
but you can also check out her on YouTube as well and her Patreon. So she seems like she knows your answer. <laughs> yeah, right, Rachel? You don't want rib cuffs on everything. I know rib cuffs are kind of a problem too, but that would, I see what you're saying. You want that, you're saying that would solve it because it's not like this big. What about a little like tabbed closure to cinch it? Okay, so let's see. We have our massive coat here. I think I'm going to leave it on the cart. Um, then think about this. I'm looking at my fabrics over there. Do you guys want to wait for a second while I look for some fabrics for this piece? Good thing I color arranged them. Oh, I have a, um, I have a, have a polka dot. Let me be right back. Let's see. Coming back. <laughs> I'm really glad you guys cannot see my studio because I switched that desk out and I just left all the furniture over there. <laughs> Alright, so um, I just grabbed a few things. I think I have I don't think I have enough of this. But what about this? It's it's got this distressed. I would avoid that. That's so weird. Um, well, I guess it's kind of throughout, but it is this kind of uh, distressed polka dot, and look, it's the same color. That little bit of a pop. Let's let's lay it out. Let's do it. We need that piece and. This piece. Okay, so this is what we're doing, guys. This. So pretend like this is the coat. And then you'd have like this little piece like this. When it was unzipped, this is what you would see. You know? I have these a little more wilder fabrics. This one might even be a collector's item now. Joel Dewberry. <laughs> that would be a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, it looks a grunge. This one's a little too... Um, Pale, but the camel is in there, you know? And I love plaid. Just that. It's something like that, you know? I don't think I have enough of this. I just got this and made an apron out of it. It's a really cool tree print. I could look for more, but um, that's what I'm thinking. Just like that little pop, you know? Uh, it's, it's a good question, Sherry. I think it's black. You like the plaid? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly, Julio. Yeah, I think Ray, exactly. I think it's just past the night. Yeah, bicycle clothes on your wrist, exactly. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, check her out, Rachel. You think plaid too? All right, I'm liking the plaid. I like the plaid or the polka dot because the polka dot is the most subtle, you know. 
Um, I'm definitely more for these like crazier prints myself, you know, you know me. But, um, I wish this was smaller. The dots of the plaid, yeah, I think you're right. And then you'd see like the, the lining, you know, in the coat. It really blends. I don't think we'd want to do the flannel. Oh, oh I was like, where'd the flag go? <laughs> Ask the coat wearer. <laughs> Yeah, the plaid, okay. Put the floral up again. Let's see. Like, I could probably aim for the bigger flowers. It goes like, it's an art deco type of print, you know. This actually coordinates with it, the plaid. Did I X out of that? Oh, I still have that Instagram, if you guys want to see that again, too. You guys want to see that Instagram again? This is falling apart. No one's going to see the lining when you're wearing it, but you know. Really, that's how you're going to see it like that. Let's look. Do you guys want to look at the Instagram post again? Let's see. See how little of it is showing? really not much. And so there's just not very many comments or explanation on it. It's very little. Yeah. You want me to go look one more time? I have more fabrics. I just don't know how crazy you want to get. Should I look one more time? I'll go look. Yeah, that's my worry too, Sherry. It's such a big print. It doesn't do it justice. I do, wait, I have another coordinating fabric. All right, let's see. Um, this one, ooh, I don't know if I have enough. Um, What about, I'm not sure I have enough of this, but what about this? Is it too? I'm not sure I have enough of this one. I may have to piece it together, but I think that would be fine if we piece it together. Yeah, okay, and 
then I have these two as well. This is called henna. So if you guys like that and I miss it, that's henna. And then this one isn't very teal-ish, but it, it, it definitely works. It's to, it is very geometric, so you get a definite geometric look. You know? And then there, this is pretty splashy. I love this background right here, though, you know? Look at that with the camel. <laughs> Tell which two I like. <laughs> You still like the dots? I have enough to do the hood and this. I just bought this at the quilt show and I had no reason to buy it, so it would be perfect. I know I have enough of it, you know? All right, well, let me think about it and then maybe I'll run these by her and see what she thinks. I know that floor, this, this one, you like this one, Rachel? Or this one. I know Sherry, right? I think some. Um, <laughs> I think some of the grunge would show though. Cause see, look at. Let's see the repeat of it. Like I could get. I think I could get avoid a lot of it. But yeah, some of these like washed out pieces are a little, little much. It is grunge. You're right. <laughs> Sometimes you like the orange flowers, Julia? Yeah. Oh, those flowers, is that what you mean? No, the orange you want that's under the camera. Yeah. I know, that's pretty it goes really good with the candle, doesn't it? Huh? Or like he oh yeah. What are you fist bumping for like which one? The Orla Keely one. Is it Orla Keely? This one? I actually have a selvage, so. Oh, look at that. I cut off the one bit of selvage that would have told me that information. <laughs> yeah, I like this. Yeah, so. I think this one, I like this a lot, but I think it's, I think it could work. I just think it's kind of big. Right? I'm gonna take a picture. <laughs> okay. Alright, so these are your guys's. You think these? I'm gonna narrow it down to those. Alright. This is the large floral you guys mean, right? I mean, definitely, you say 70s, and it's like, for me, it's art, totally art deco. Like, this one's 70s to me, and the black. <laughs> Your Bonnie or shared opinion, yeah. <laughs> Night, Rachel. Yeah, it must be late. <laughs> Okay, we've narrowed it down. I always love this fabric. I called it meadow. This was the lining, and this was the binding. It looked really good. I loved it. It sold okay, and then towards the end, it went crazy when I didn't have any left. <laughs> I was like, of course. <laughs> now I can't get any more fabric. All right, um... Well, cool. I think that's good. I think I like that idea. I don't think the lining would be good for that little bit um, either. So I guess I could have showed you a picture of the sewing instructions to tell you what piece that was. But I think that Instagram post made me go, what the heck? I didn't even know that was there. So that was good to see. That's why Instagram hashtags are so good. Even if you're not on Instagram, you know. 
Well, you guys, I'm excited. I'm really excited to sew this. This is going to go together really good. So we're making this bottom coat right here, um, fully lined. It obviously comes in the short with collar as well, and you can do hood or collar on either one. So dots, orange flowers, big floor. That's your preference, Julia? These three in that order? Flip the Art Deco. and Yeah, let's look at this Art Deco. I feel like we could position this, you know, so that maybe we got it so that maybe I don't So the pattern piece is right here, okay? So it really is about this much that show. We'll take the zipper away so you can see it better. So you could pick like, you know, getting as many flowers as possible but they are pretty far apart, right? What if I did this? What if I did this? What about that? Yeah, exactly, Sherry. I can turn the fabric, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I could do it, the flowers like folded in half like that, or it could be, you know, down center like this. I kind of like that. But um, yeah, what do you think of that, you guys? What if it was like this? All right, Julia, Eliza wants to know what you think. That I didn't even notice the center of this flower is exactly the same color as this camel. Like it's the same color. What do you think of that, you guys? This is gonna, yeah, I think that too, don't you? This is gonna make this coat like really good. I mean, I could even, I could do this, but um, I don't think these stems are as nice. You know? Nah. Okay. I think we have our winner. I think this is our winner. Yeah. I like it too. Ooh, this is going to be so exciting. using this fabric because I've had this little piece for so long. <laughs> cool. Thanks you guys. I'm excited. That's going to be gorgeous. I wonder if I can get it to where it looks like um, this. No. No, I think I'll do that. I think that'll be the easiest is just putting it on the half right there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Ooh, this is going to turn out great. Okay, cool. All right, you guys, what time is it? Two o'clock. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Well, um, stay tuned tomorrow. You guys join me. It'll be really, it's going to come together. So beautiful. I'm so excited. Yay. All right. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me today, you guys, and cutting out this beautiful coat. You wish it was a navy blue zipper? I'll see if I have one. It's kind of a, I think it's black. I'll look 
to see if I might, maybe I have one. I actually think I have one this color. Do you want me to look real quick? It's right there. I'll get my bin. Yeah, that's true. The flower halves will be facing each other when it's zipped. Let's see how long this is. I need 22 inches. This, I could do this. What do you guys think of that? I don't have navy blue. I have this one. I have a lot of invisible zippers. What do you think of that? The the um the only thing about this is it has two zipper pulls in it and it has a it has a two-way head. <laughs> yeah, right Eliza, exactly. Well, it's going to be amazing. So, <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, I will see you tomorrow, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific. This is our last project of the year together. So it is a really fun one to do together. I know we're all really busy. So <laughs> thanks for coming. And thanks for helping me figure out these fabric choices. Um, this person's going to stay nice and warm. Yeah, I think the darker one's better, Sherry. After all that, right? The contrast is nice. And remember, you won't see all this. You'll just see the, you'll just see the, the, um, that, you know? You won't see as much as you think. So, yeah. All right, you guys. Hasta mañana, iguanas. Yeah, me too. I think it's going to be great. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, and um, I'm so exciting. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know about that. Right. I know. I was thinking, like, I really don't show tell a lot about my personal life. I tell you guys a little bit, but yeah, yeah. So <laughs> maybe someday. All right, you guys. Have a fantastic day. Rest of your night. Sleep well. For those of you already getting to bed, and um, yeah, me too, Julia. Um, and um, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hope to see you. Bye, guys. Take care. <laughs>